back with the GE Super Bass. Got the top board pulled up here. We're doing the uh, from this leaky capacitor. This thing really split open, belched out all over the circuit board. It's trying to focus on it, but the, yeah, the rubber on the bottom, yeah, you can see it's all split open. So it's belched belched out all over the other side of this board. Yeah. Luckily, it wasn't too bad like the last one, or I actually had to do a bunch of trace repairs. This one, it, it did leak through the uh, circuit trace and around, and it had a little bit of corrosion here, but that was easy, easy to clean up. Just use the uh, you know fiberglass rush eraser. Um, and then the other side, let me get my jack stand out of here. Board laid back down in here. And this side, of course, this is the side that had the capacitor on it, so it's going to be the worst, but actually cleaned up fairly nicely. Don't have to actually replace any of the traces there. Yeah. And you can see the residue, how it leached out, but pretty much. Had a slight bit of oxidation on all those traces. So, got all that cleaned off. So now it's just a matter, I'll tin them first and apply a liberal amount of flux to all these. Uh, tin them and then clean everything off really good a couple times with isopropyl, make sure we get rid of all that oil residue, and then go over it with some epoxy overcoat, and uh, be ready to recap it, because uh, this was a, like I say, working radio, it just over-modulated, and it's off frequency, so this is about the only actual repair that really needs done, the only thing that was really wrong with it was this area here, so finally a fairly simple one. Okay, back got the circuit board cleaned up on this GE Super Bass. Got the uh, bad electrolytic capacitor down here, which we'll get to get to that critter in a second. But uh, got lucky on this one. Act no actual damage other than some corrosion on the board. So I was able to just remove the capacitor, the surrounding components, clean off all the traces like you just saw. Uh, tint you. Know, Put a lot of flux on here. Use, you know, I, I mix up my liquid flux. Saturate the area on both sides with uh, flux, and then tinned all of the traces, and then just put a good epoxy overcoat on there. So that's all. That's all cured now. So now I can. Now that that's dry, I can get into doing the uh, cap job, replacing all the electrolytic capacitors, get the uh, alignment done on this thing. Uh, few other little things would be according to clean the controls I got to change the uh, meter lights in this and a little bit of work on the faceplate but uh, so this one like I say fairly good condition had that uh, one leaky cap which we'll get to now so the leaky cap which I don't know what it is with this cap get it unhooked from my probes here this one always seems to be the one that always leaks but uh, it's a thousand microfarad, sixteen volt, and of course it always has this corrosive glue on there, and you can see how it's cracked open. That's why it leached out all over the place. But uh, the interesting thing is, this radio should definitely work uh, better <laughs> once I get that cap replaced because it's open. So, you know, it reads uh, 61 picofarads. <laughs> so, yeah, 61, thing, you, know, you can see it jumping around, just me moving the terminal leads. So, yeah, the it's, I have no doubt the where the lead goes in, the inside, you know, where the terminal goes on it. Because I've torn a bunch of these apart over the years, and usually when they're they're like that, it's it's actually corroded the inside. It's oxidized off, so the... A little strap of uh, aluminum that's actually crimped onto the two aluminum plates on there 
is then also attached to this copper lead and it just oxidizes the aluminum oxidizes and it basically corrodes off so yeah it's that capacitor hasn't been doing anything for probably quite some time anyhow so yeah putting that in there ought to definitely make a some a little bit of improvement on this thing because that uh that electrolytic supplies you know a lot of filtering and basically it's kind of like i often say you can think of an electrolytic capacitor in a lot of situations as a you know short-term battery uh you know in a lot of circuits that's basically what they're used as and because that's what a filter cap capacitor does um if you have spikes you know or dips in your voltage you know the capacitor can absorb absorb energy store it in in the short term and then release that energy whenever there's a volt whenever there's a drop of voltage in the circuit it can give up its stored energy so like i say it's it, they act like basically uh short-term backup batteries and of course this one is in the amplifier stage so yeah not exactly a good place to be having no uh electrolytic filter capacitor because <laughs> with it being open you know a couple pico faradets yeah it wasn't doing anything so we'll get this uh critter all all recapped and put back together get the faceplate done i do have a video i want to put together for the uh faceplate because i'm actually going to be doing some repairs on that it has kind of a ding down in the bottom corner and i want to get that uh actually filled in some and then color match the paint a little bit to try and hide hide that small defect in it so I'm, i'll do a separate video on that a little bit later